let's work on count a bunch itself now. We're supposed to analyze the worst case asymptotic runtime of count a bunch in terms of n. And we assume n is an integer and n is greater than zero. So here's count a bunch, and it looks like it goes all the way down to here. And then we've got another function, descend from down below, that we'll have to think about a little later. And let's just start from the top and read through count a bunch. And as I go, I'm just going to annotate the lines that are really, really obvious. So i gets one, that, that clearly takes constant time. We're not going to have to worry too much about that. Uh, now we've got a loop. Well, i is less than n, i times gets two. So this is, uh, this is i is equal to i times two, so double i. Uh, now, loops, I'm just going to block together and maybe come back to them a little bit later on. Uh, but this line right here clearly takes constant time. So let's just mark that as constant time. Now, this line here, well, the comparison itself takes constant time and the loop control takes constant time. But how many iterations is this running? And this is a while loop, so it's not maybe totally obvious how many iterations it runs. So let's come back to it later. Uh, and then down here, we just divide i by 2. So we're doubling it, doubling it, doubling it, and it looks like we double it one time too often, so we're going to divide it in half after the end of the loop. That also takes constant time. And then we've got another loop. Let's just box that set here. Well, n is not divisible by i, i plus plus. OK. Uh, well, this takes constant time. Uh, oops, not order i, order 1. Uh, this this looks much trickier. Uh, how long is it going to take to, uh, sorry, how many iterations will it be before we finish this loop? Let's just assume that, that this divisibility test does take constant time. Uh, that's a much bigger question, how long it takes to determine if one number is divisible by another. But since we're making some assumptions about constant time performance of mathematical operations, arithmetic operations, we'll just say this takes constant time. OK, well, also a tricky loop, so let's leave it to, for a little bit later as well. And then we've got one final loop here with a nested loop inside of it. This is a counting loop, so it's very easy to see that this loop will go i iterations. And it's very easy to see that this loop will also go i iterations, actually independent of the outer loop. That's a little easier when the inner loop and the outer loop are independent of each other. So we're going to execute this innermost statement i squared times. Uh, but how long will this take? Well, this is going to call descend from on j and k. So in order to figure out how long that takes, we're going to have to analyze this other function, descend from. Now, we are effectively creating a function tc of n, which is the runtime in terms of basic steps, which we're being pretty vague about how many basic steps do we perform and what's a basic step. but the runtime of count a bunch. On an input of size n. That's usually what we'd write, but actually in this case, we're not really doing of size n. We're just saying on input n. So that's the runtime of count a bunch on input n. And we're working on building up that function and giving an asymptotic bound on it. Well, we can, we can sort of delay the problem of figuring out how long descend from takes by just giving the runtime of that function a name. So we can just say descend from, I'm going to use descend from's parameter names here, n and x. td of n x is the runtime. And those are both numbers, so we're going to treat it the same way as above of descend from on an input, and this time we'll jump straight to it without saying size, because they're just numbers. We're not going to concern ourselves about the size right now of n and x. OK, so how long does this line right here take? Well, that particular line here, let's, let's cross that out. This particular line actually takes td of j comma k. How do I know it takes td of j comma k? Because I just defined a function that said that's how long it takes. Now, obviously later on I'm going to want to solve for that. Uh, but this is actually a really good start. In fact, this is a good enough start that I, I kind of want to write down some points about what we've just done here. So I'll, I'll just scroll down, give myself some space. So what have we done? Uh, we have labeled 
runtime of simple lines. We have uh, marked loop blocks and where possible labeled number of iterations. Let me not say where possible. We did it where it was easy, right? So it was easy. Similarly, what are the simple lines? What are the lines where we've labeled the runtime? Well, this is the lines where it was easy for us to label the runtime of those lines. You know, it's it's easy to say we can set i to zero in constant time, and we'll come back to anything that's hard. Okay, what else have we done? Uh, we've given a name to the runtime of complex called functions. So we called this function descend from. It's not obvious how long descend from takes, so we just gave a name to the runtime of descend from. And all this gives us a great start. And actually, in essence, if I can jump back up for just a moment, what it's done is it's broken count a bunch into a few pieces. So we have this piece up here that we're going to have to analyze, which is all about the first loop. We have this piece here, the second loop. And we have this piece here, the third loop. And our rules about how to do analysis of sequential code say however long that first chunk takes, we'll add it to however long the next chunk takes, add that to however long the next chunk takes, and that will give us a runtime for the whole thing. So breaking this into chunks is a great way to break the problem down into pieces. So I'm just going to add that to the list. That kind of came out of labeling the uh, loops, but let's just say break the function into chunks for analysis. How? Well, if it's labeled as being in chunks, you know, if it says first do this, and then it's got some lines of code, and then it says second do this, and then it's got some lines of code, those seem like natural ways to break it in chunks. And if it's not, then just try to look for pieces that make sense. As long as you've kind of labeled the loops and that sort of thing, you can break it into chunks kind of anywhere you want. Uh, it's just some groupings will be more meaningful than others. Great, so that's a good start. At this point, I think the next big tasks that we have are, let's just label them. Um, we need to find the number of iterations here and the runtime of this loop. So this is task number one. Are we going to do it first? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, here, same thing. We need the number of iterations and runtime of this loop. Uh, task number two. We already have the number of iterations of this loop, so we, what we really need is solve for TD in some way that makes sense. I mean, how will we solve for TD? We're, we're gonna have to investigate descend from in order to do that. Uh, but that's kind of our task three. We need to figure out more about descend from. And which of those will we do first? Well, let's talk them over briefly and do whichever one is easiest first. Uh, let's see, this loop right here, well, it's, it's made tricky because we're doubling i each time. If we were just adding 1 to i, uh, then this would go uh, n iterations, right, from i equals 1 up to n. Um, this seems doable, uh, a little bit tricky, uh, but, you know, if I had to rate it on a scale from 1 to 10, I don't know, it's, it's a 4, it's not that hard, maybe. Uh, how about this one? Okay. Well, n is not divisible by i. We're, we're going to have to reason a lot about what n is and what i is. Maybe we're going to say crazy stuff like, oh, let's say n is a prime, because we know there's an infinite number of primes, and then n won't be divisible by i. Uh, this, this sounds painful. Uh, and then descend from, uh, it's hard to decide how hard this one is until we look at that function descend from. So I think I'd probably start with number one here, and then I'd either do two or three. Um, I kind of think this is ugly, so maybe I'd prefer to do three first. So I might try one, 
and then three, and then two. But for the purposes of this video, I think I'll just do one, and then two, and then three, so that you can follow along from top to bottom. 